morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our Advent theme for the week is love. So we're going to open our opening song. If you get your hymnal, really short, page 237. You may already know it. We're going to sing it through together. Together. And then we're going to, <laughs> with our vast congregation, we're going to try to do a round <laughs> where we'll do this side first. The woman with the curly hair, you're on charge this side. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the beautiful voice. And this side, the handsome man. <laughs> okay, so this, this is how it's going to go. It says, and you don't have to play yet. Love, 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 love. The gospel in one word is love. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love, love, love. So we're going to sing it through together. Then we're going to start this side. Love, 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 love. The gospel in one word. Wait. Love, 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 love. Then with this side going to start. Love, love, love. You'll feel it. Okay. You'll feel it. It'll go. Okay. Ready? Page 237. Let's stand up. Let's stand up. And celebrate love. And celebrate love. It's all about the love today. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Our guest speaker is our guest lighter, too. <laughs> We're so lucky. All righty. Um, so we open prayer. 
you could close your eyes, settle into your seat, take a deep healing, cleansing breath in, and relax and let it go out. Bring it in again, and relax and let it go out. In your mind, you visualize a little ball of healing light rising over the horizon, and that light's coming towards you, and in that light is your smiling, loving face. You visualize yourself sometime in the past in a positive, affirmational light, where now you see yourself in charge, in love, in light, in peace. The light moves to the present. You visualize yourself in the busyness of the season, finding the peace, finding the joy, and finding the love. Being gracious to yourself, those around you, and holding up consciousness and space for those all around the world. Another breath. Release. The light gets bigger. We're moving forward. Thank you, God, for the love, the light, the peace, the hope, and the joy of the world. Together, thank you, God, for the love, the light, the peace, and the joy in the world. And so it is. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Unity of Columbus where our mission is with God as, as our source, Unity of Columbus inspires people to realize and express their divine nature in an awakening world. Thank yes. you. My name is Julie Dillick, and I'm your platform assistant today. Nice to meet you. Okay. It is my great joy to welcome you to our Sunday celebration service of love. Yeah. Round of applause. Uh, we welcome you all to Unity, and we especially welcome anyone who is here for the first time today. Anyone who's here for the first time, if you'd like to raise your hand, someone will bring you a packet which will tell you a little bit more of what unity is all about. Um, we want you to know, and welcome for everybody coming in now, that no matter your background, your orientation, your beliefs, you are welcome here in our community at Unity. We're happy to have you here. All right. Um, today, our guest speaker is Mr. Cedric Miller. <laughs> and his um, talk is going to be on a time for love and a time for peace. So we're looking forward to hearing that today and learning from that. All right, please join me in affirming our statement of faith <clears throat> together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. There's that love again. All love. All right. All right. Um, I guess I'm going to invite you to close your eyes again just for a moment. Take a deep breath. 
and focus your mind on one thought in that statement, hold it in your consciousness, could be the love piece, how it manifests in many ways in our life, every day, all the time. As we are conscious and aware of it, we receive it, we allow the love to come. We don't block it. We don't shut it down. But we receive it. Another deep breath. From the consciousness of that one thought, let us again affirm our statement of faith. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good, all the love. Thank you, everyone. And now our congregational song, grab your hymnals again is page 271. These are our wonderful Christmas songs that we all know. We're probably going to sing two verses. Yes. And it's Away in the Manger, page 271. <laughs> sacred, human, and divine, immediate, and immortal. Amid seasonal greetings for joy and peace, I give thanks for the power of love. I am a divine being bringing the love of God into the world. Through my words and actions, I am kind and patient, compassionate, and empathetic, and encouraging and supportive. As I am blessed by love, I share love's blessings with others. I center myself in the Christ within and go forth as the heart and hands of love in the world. And from 1 John 4, 7, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And the affirmation again, which I'll say and then have you repeat with me, 
I feel blessed to share God's steadfast love together. I feel blessed to share God's steadfast love. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pam. Affirmative prayer is the foundation of the unity movement. One of our practices in Unity of Columbus is praying with others. In unity, we do not pray to God up there, away from us. We pray instead from the consciousness of oneness, which can only come from the God within us. In order to align our minds with the one divine mind of God, we must release the barriers that separate us in consciousness from the light and love of God. We must let go of fear and give way to love. Yeah. We take time to become still and recognize that indwelling oneness, divine mind is in the midst of all. And in so doing, we release any fearful, anxious thoughts about those for whom we pray so that we may know the truth for those individuals. If there are any thoughts toward anything or anyone in your past that is causing you suffering in this moment, I invite you to be free through the gift and the blessing of forgiveness. Forgiveness is an act of the will. We can choose, we can make a choice right now to release our attachment to the past, to let it go. Don't hold it back anymore. You know the rest. Okay. In order to free ourselves, will you join me this morning in affirming, I forgive and I am free. Together? I forgive and I am free. Release it. It's just, it's gone. And from that consciousness of freedom, we now turn our attention to praying for others. As our prayer box comes forward, thank you, prayer box coming forward. We invite you to hold in prayer all the names in our prayer box and others in your life for whom you are praying. In unity, we do not pray to change others. We pray to change ourselves, our consciousness, to lift our consciousness to the divine. In that light, we see through the single eye of spirit. We affirm oneness and wholeness right now. Can we say that? I affirm oneness and wholeness right now. Together? I affirm oneness and wholeness right now. No longer do we see people as broken, poor, lost, or sick. Instead, we see them as children of God, full of light, love, and life. I invite you to picture each person with a smile on their face, someone who, for whom you're praying now and you have concern, and a light in their heart. So that we may share that vision with you, I invite you to speak their names aloud here and now. Oh, blessed spirit, we know that you answer all prayers, and the answer is yes. We celebrate and give thanks for this time of prayer, and we go forth with a mighty faith that all is in divine order. And so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you.
you grab your hymnals again and turn to page 272. 272. 272. Choir. <laughs> it came upon a midnight clear.
the Christmas presence within us. Breathe. And as you release, feel free to let your hand drop to your sides. Reach a deeper state of relaxation. Silently affirm to yourself, I am the love of God expressing. As we rest for a few moments in the sacred stillness of the silence. In this sacred space, faith is rekindled. Peace is established. And love abounds from our heart center, our Christ center, radiating outwardly into this space of our surroundings and out across the miles for all of those joining in this sacred practice remotely. And the world is blessed. As we bring our attention and awareness back to this time and space and become more aware of our surroundings, we remain in prayer. We hold this meditation in our hearts and minds as we return to our activities this day. With grateful hearts, we take a deep breath as a prayer of gratitude for this opportunity to be, to live, move, and have our be in the light of pure love that is the Christ. And we say thank you, thank you, thank you God together. Thank you God, thank you God, thank you God. And so it is, amen. And that's page 269. Mm -hmm. Do you see what it is? Yeah. Okay. If you want to sing, you can. If you don't, that's fine. Simone, you want to come up? Yeah. <coughs> uh, you want to come up and go tell it on the map? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we have all kinds of talent, treasures here in this congregation, of which we are so grateful. Yes. 269. 
Thank you, my sister. You know, people back in those days, did they ever smile? But it, yeah, no doubt. But it turns out that Charles Fillmore actually is a funny guy. And he gave a funny story about Advent on the radio in 1924. Would you like to hear that story? Sure. Yes. Okay. 
So it turns out that there was a farmer. He said, this is a farmer. And it's, he was really into Advent. You know, this was a time when people were just saying, hey, I'm going to be, the angel's going to come down and he's going to take me up in heaven. And so this farmer, he had been planning and planning. And then the day before Advent, he said, you know what? I'm really going to welcome the angels. So he goes out into his barn and he gets hay and he stacks it really high because he wanted to be close when these angels come down and lift him up. So the night before, there he is, his haystack is high. He goes into his house and he put on his best suit, three-piece suit, and he tucks his Bible in his top pocket and such, and he climbs up on his haystack. He falls asleep and he's dreaming of these angels going to come down and lift him up. And he sleeps through the night. But unbeknownst to him, some kids come in with some matches and light the hay. And he's waking up from his sleep and he smells smoke. And he looks around and see all this smoke and fire around him. And he says to himself, I knew I was going to wake up on the wrong side. <laughs> it was good we all woke up on the right side this morning yes. Yes. <laughs> so again as we know that Advent is known as a, uh, the season of the second coming of Christ and we know that the Christ is within us and it's really it's a time of rebirth it's a time of rebirth. And you know, as you look around, some people are confused about, they say, well, I have the Christmas blues in us. I'm really not into it. And, but there's, there's not really an understanding that we are renewing ourselves to the earth. We go around this earth here, and we're getting into the last few days of the earth traveling around the sun. So we are renewing ourselves for the new year. And it's kind of like a Ferris wheel. You know, on the Ferris wheel, if you ever watch a Ferris wheel, and about the time it gets around to that last loop, there's people who are cheering, there's people who are brave, there's people who want to jump off the side of it. <laughs> You know, there's just a lot of different emotions. So be patient with yourself here during the Christmas period because you're renewing yourself for the new year that's coming forth. And that's true. And we all do that. Because if we didn't, I would still be watching a $6 million man after work. <laughs> <laughs> so our consciousness does evolve. And there's a lot of happiness and such around this the season. Does anybody know, by the way, why December 25th is chosen as Christmas? Well, I would like to say that it's Jesus' birthday. However, the date was chosen due to Jesus' crucifixion was on March 25th. So nine months after that is December 25th. So it's the rebirth of Christ, the coming back, the return of Christ. And that's why we have the 29th. Does anyone want to take a guess on what the Latin meaning of the word Christmas is? Christmas. Christ, which is love. Mas. In Spanish speakers, which is more. More love. That's what it is, more love. Now with that, do you think anybody in the world cannot celebrate Christmas? Christmas is open to everyone. And this is why Unity chooses love as our theme here during Advent, because Christmas is basically more love. It's about more love. Jesus is our representation. He's the master teacher. We evolve in consciousness to this love consciousness Whereas we can be people who love 
at all times. And for those who were here back in May, I gave a talk on love. So I'm going to go through that a little bit again. So some of this may be uh, some things that you may have already known. Love. So love is a word that sometimes the meaning, many times the meanings get mixed up. When we think of love, we think of romance. You know, there's a lot of songs out there that are about love. A lot of movies. Harry met Sally and this and that. So we kind of think of this thing as romance and stuff. But love is a lot bigger than that. Love is a energy. It's a part of us, who we are, and, and who we are involving to be more like, which is agape love. And when you get to that agape love, there's a lot of gifts that goes with that. You know, there's a lot, did you know there's a lot of gifts? The closer you get to God, there's a lot more gifts that you get. Gifts. And so, again, love is a vibration, it's the absence, of course, of hate and fear. And it's unchanging. Now, an example of that is a baby. You know, when you see a baby, it has pure bliss. You know, no matter if the cat jumps in the Christmas tree or, you know, it's eating a cookie or whatever, the cat, the kid just stays there in a sense of love. But you know that that is possible for us. And that's what this Christmas season is about. It's a renewal. It's a reminder of that we are loved. And like Christ, we can evolve back into our authentic, authentic self. Now, being that love is a vibration, keep that in mind, it's a vibration. And a lot of this may come out a little complicated right now. But you've had those experiences. You know, when you see someone for the first time that you're in love with, you know, nothing in the world could go wrong. You know, you see flowers everywhere, or you, know, you see your grandchildren for the first time, or for these dancers, people who like to go out dancing, or you hear some music that you love. That itself is increasing the vibration of love. It's not out there. One would be confused and think that, oh, it's, it's this person who's causing me to love. No. What they're doing is they're raising your frequency of love that's already in you. And so you, yourself, are the operator of this love that is within you. And it has never left. And it would never leave. And again, it's just a part of practice. Practice, practice. So many of you may know Sandra Ann Taylor, and she wrote this wonderful book, and I highly recommend it. It's called The Secret of Attraction. The Secret of Attraction. You know that you can draw anything to yourself just by increasing the love within you. So she has a statement in her book, and she says that the world is a switching station, you know, kind of like trains and such. You know, you see a train coming through, the engineer pulls the lever back and it goes this way or it can go this way. And that whatever we send out, it comes back to us. And George Harrison and all these others who've always said, you know, the love you give is the love you get. That is what it's about. And she goes further to say that with love and within the law of magnetism, we can increase our good in our career, our financial situations, our homes, and experiencing love, again, on a day-to-day -day basis. And obviously, as we turn on the TV these days, we see some things happening on TV and we say to ourselves, you know, why are they fighting? What you know? What's 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 this fighting about? You know. And the thing about fighting is too. You know, as, as we talk about that Ferris wheel, as it comes into its last loop, I always tell my coworkers, you're the mind.
month of October. At the October, get very quiet in the office. You know, people are going to begin to build some stuff there. And it's just like that Ferris wheel again, just, just coming to an end there. But again, you know, we see these fights and such that break out across the world, and we say, you know, what is going on during Christmas time and stuff? And we step back and say, what is up with those folks that are fighting? Like, but the reality is, is that we all, every single one of us, contribute to a collective consciousness. So in essence, we all are involved in creating war through our consciousness as a collective consciousness people. But the good part about that is this. The more that we get more and more into our divine being, the more the Jewish war stop. And things have evolved. Of course, a thousand years ago, there have been hundreds of wars across, but we have a few left, which is a good sign. Which we only have a few left, which means that we, as a collective consciousness, are growing more and more and more in love. And I can see that as I walk around at my daughter. She works at the mall, and I. I've been at this mall at Easton so many times this year. You know, I walk in now, hey, Miss Miller, good to see you again. Well, I know we saw you yesterday and the day before. But uh, you see so many people now getting along together. I see that. And I've seen that over time. And I've seen that in America. You know, there's a lot of complaints that we have. But I see across the world, because I do watch YouTube. <laughs> and I see that just out in public, that people are becoming more loving and people are becoming more peaceful. And as time evolves, you know, there will be a generation one day that will look back and say, wow, we really appreciate all that you know, our, our ancestors had to go to for us to get to this point of love and peace and harmony cooperation that we're going through right now. So during this holiday, think about that. Think about the fact that you and the person that's sitting next to you have helped to create a more loving world. And that's why we should enjoy this Christmas time. Because it's a celebration. It's a rebirth. It's a rebirth of you a chance for you to go into 2024 and become a new person. And so, as we go forward, know that again, that you, the person that's sitting there in that chair, is love. And you want to practice that. So as you are driving through the holiday traffic this year, someone cuts in front of you, doesn't signal and such, and you just want to throw up your hand and go, hello. <laughs> Resist it. Resist it. Resist it. Because the ego wants you to throw a particular sign at that person in the car. And when you resist it, the ego just is smaller and smaller and smaller. And when your mother-in-law brings out that homemade fruit cake, <laughs> you know, and you get that face on your look and say, I remember this cake from last year. You know, just say, hey, just give me a little taste of that wonderful pie. And your ego is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you practice that throughout the year. Practice that throughout the year. And when we get to Advent next year, You'll be surprised not only how you change inside, but how your environment around you has changed. And you are adding to the collective consciousness of love that's all around us. So as we go forward, know that this is the season not only of Christ and what Christ did to give us this wonderful knowledge of love and consciousness and such. But know also that you are loved and you have a right to enjoy.
enjoy this time and share this love with others. Because there are those out here who are looking for your love to be an example for them. So thank you very much. And I want to give an affirmation here. And that is, I give birth to love, joy, and peace. Can we say that together? I give birth to love, joy, and peace. Happy Advent and Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you, Cedric, for reminding us to hold a consciousness in ourselves, in our community, in our world, for love, for peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now, okay, here we go. Thank you, Cedric, again for that inspiring message. <laughs> and now is the time in our service where we tithe the gift of our treasure, our talents, and knowing that we prosper through the act of giving. Hope, love, peace, and um, whatever we have to contribute in the world, even if it, we're holding a consciousness, that is valuable in the stillness. Our ministry is supported by your tax-deductible gifts, ties, and love offerings, and we are grateful for you. If you are viewing this remotely and you wish to donate online, please visit our website, unityofcolumbus.org, and use the donate button to make your offering. Also, if you are here in the sanctuary and you would wish to give online, then you may want to scan our QR code, quick response code, uh, located at the back of the sanctuary or at the lobby desk. It'll take you right to our donation page where you can give your love offering. We live in an abundant universe. I invite you to affirm with me our offering blessing. I'll speak it once and invite you to repeat it. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you for repeating it with me. <laughs> okay, and now our song, 279, Angels We Have Heard on High. <laughs>
come forward. Thank you. We can we hold up our hands and bless this offering, everyone? Thank you. We are so grateful for these generous gifts. We know both the giver and receiver are richly blessed. And we affirm that we are in a greater and greater flow of abundance. We believe it, we receive it, we manifest it. We thank you, God. Everyone? Thank, thank you, God. God. Okay, thank you, Ushers. Amen. And now it is time we give thanks for everyone to be here holding consciousness in space, whether you're here in person or whether you're online. We thank you for your consciousness, your love, your light, and your peace holding a space in this world in consciousness. We have a mighty power to move to a greater space, to a better place, to a more loving place kinder world. You receive it? Yes. You believe it? Yes. All right. Hold the consciousness of space for that. Okay. We give thanks for all who helped make this service possible. Yes. For Jonathan. Yes. For Jeff. For Darren. For Cedric. Yes. For all our kitchen crew, our lighting, our um, ushers. <laughs> Our box bringing forward, Mara, thank you so much. Our daily word reader, Pam, thank you so much. For everyone coming today on this rainy day, we really appreciate your presence. And all those online tuning in, we are so grateful. Okay. All right. Um, and we have some announcements. Let's see what those are. Oh, there they are, man. I feel like a Darren, he goes, it's up there, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. So December 19th, our resource group for the homeless meets from 12 to 1.30. Volunteers are needed. Our apple pie sale, yum, 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 is still going on. Ongoing until the end of the year. See Roxy or Veronica. Or to order your pies. I've been enjoying my pie in my oatmeal. I know I'm a little strange, but I just like it like that. It's a great holiday gift for those uh, family and friends or coworkers. So it's not too late, but we're winding down on our pie sale. Great holiday gift. Ongoing is our chocolate fundraiser from the world's finest chocolates. They're $2 each, and it's a great stocking stuffer. Uh, let's see. Oh, our Advent midweek discussion with our licensed Unity teacher, our newest one, Darren. Hope, peace, and joy. That's going to be on Wednesday at what time? Uh, 6.30 to 8. 6.30 to 8. And this Wednesday will be the last, the last okay. one. And this Wednesday will be our last um, study on that. 6.30 to 8. So we hope to see you there. On January 7th is our annual meeting. And so we hope that everyone sign up to who's a member will re, um, you know, renew their membership and join us for the annual meeting. So this Christmas Eve, we will not have a night service here, but at Delaware Unity at 7 p.m. <coughs> they will have a Christmas Eve service if anyone wants to attend there. Um, also. <coughs> We are holding consciousness in the silence in that little room at 12.15 to 12.20, just holding a space for peace and quiet and just whatever. Let your monkey mind go. <laughs> Let your ego go and resonate in the stillness. Hopefully that will launch you to your week and going into consciousness at this busy time. It's a vital thing to reaffirm. There are prayer chaplains after the service to pray with you should you have a prayer concern or a need. And we just hold everybody at this busy time in a conscious state. And as our speaker Cedric said, knowing the time for peace and the time for love. And now is our time to give thanks for our children. Yes. And our children want to come up? We are walking in the light, in the light, in the light. We are walking in the light, in the light of love. In the light, in the light, in the light, in the light. In the light, in the light, in the light, in the light of love. Thank you. We bless these children and all children of the world. Let's get some
some energy. And after me, we love you. We love you. We bless you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. And we believe in you. And we believe in you. And we truly behold the Christ in you. And we truly behold the Christ in you. Just as you are. Just as you are. not in your printed announcements or up here, but um, there is, there are two of our end of year, beginning of the new year events that I will invite you to join us for here, bring a friend, bring family. On the 31st, right here in this room at 11, during the service, we will have our burning bowl, which is a wonderful releasement exercise. If there's anything this past year or any of the years previous that you want to let go of and you don't want to carry into 2024, join us for that service. It is amazing. Also, January 7th is our white stone ceremony where we get to claim a new name, a new identity, a new, really make an intention for ourselves for our personal spiritual journey for 2024. So join us for those two services. Don't miss them. Some of you guys were here for, I think, the first time during at least one of those services. I know you were. I know. And it, it's, it's life transforming. I will just say that. But the real reason I came up here is that we are... Ah, we have a re-roofing project currently underway. Pardon our dust. Thank you for your generous donations, which make this work possible. Give yourselves a hand on that. That is a, an idea whose time has come. And we have, I am also, in addition to those other things Julie mentioned, I am also the chair of this year's board nominating committee. This will be the last time I will be since once you're a licensed teacher, you can't really serve on that committee unless you're the spiritual leader. That's a whole other story. We have three wonderful candidates for this year's election. <laughs> yes. And these next three Sundays between now and the annual meeting, one of the representatives of our commi committee will be speaking with you about them. I'll list them just briefly. Harriet Heigl. Sydney Shear and Tommy Timmons. The thought just occurred to me yesterday, within the last 24 hours, that we have three people with double initials. <laughs> HS, HH, SS, and TT. I just, I love that. It's just, that never occurred to me until just within the last day. So about Harriet Heibel, there she is. She's not here today physically. She's recovering from uh, surgery, so please hold her in your prayers a little little hip replacement. She'll be in here dancing the next time you see her. She is a Gallup certified strengths coach and organizational development consultant. Harriet splits her time between Martinez, California, and Columbus, where she is grandmother to three beautiful girls. In her volunteer life, she facilitates divorce care and boundary programs for adults who are navigating difficult relational challenges. She currently serves on Unity's Growth Committee and is a regular contributor to Unity's Homeless Program. So when she's in town, you will see her on the third Tuesday of each month, including, well, not this Tuesday, but in future months. Harriet is interested in serving as a Unity board member because she feels it is a way for her to use her business and organizational development skills and experience to serve our Unity congregation. She wants to be of service by using God-given talents in ways that support the overall unity ministry and message. So let us give Harriet a hand. <laughs> and the candidate bios for all three of our candidates will be posted on the board, board in our hallway here leading to Wilson Hall. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. 
We are so grateful for these candidates. We're so grateful for all of you, our church, congregation, our family, coming together with your love, your talents, your treasures, your tithes, and all you have to give to make this place just growing and renewing and just make us happy to see each other, even driving through the rain. I'm yes. just saying. <laughs> okay. So at this time, let's affirm our prayer for protection together. If you'd like to stand. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. In closing, let us raise our consciousness for peace, for love, for joy, for hope. One person, one mind, one heart, one soul at a time. Please join me as we sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And if you'd like to come out to the aisle and hold hands, that would be great. <laughs>